Okay, I installed the updated Windows installer, so now I will try to install the more recent version of the C++ uh, redistributable libraries here, version 2010. All right. Okay. All right, so C++ redistributable package has been installed. Now I can try to install OpenSSL. We'll run that. And it says that it wants the 2008 redistributables. Okay, so it wants actually the older version. Um, so let's install that too. All right, so we'll run that one. Okay, now we'll run this. Okay, it doesn't like the fact that there is a command prompt open. Let's take a look here and see if we have anything running that I'm not aware of. Alright, there was a hidden command prompt open, so I shut that off. And now we'll run OpenSSL. Okay, you can make a donation to the OpenSSL um, project if you like. I'm just going to hit finish. Um, so we have OpenSSL installed. Now we need to install S-Tunnel. So here's the S-Tunnel installer, and now I'll install that. Okay, as you can see, it's automatically writing, since I already installed OpenSSL, it's already writing a 2048-bit RSA private key, um, S-Tunnel.pem. And it's gonna it's doing this automatically with the installation of S Tunnel. So as I'm installing it, it's asking me to fill in now the um, information for this um, certificate for this SSL certificate. So I'm gonna type in US and then state. Um, let's say I'm in Wyoming and city Sheridan and then organizational name and I'll just say Dan's lab and unit name and I'll just hit a dot and enter and then common name and I'll just put in Dan's lab this is your organization let's say right and done alright so that was nice and I was not expecting to have the the automatic prompt for writing the SSL certificate for S-Tunnel. So it was nice that we installed um, OpenSSL first before installing S-Tunnel because then I think that allowed, that's what allowed the program to find OpenSSL and then prompt us to create a certificate. Okay, we can see the details here. We'll just close. And so that's great. Now we have S-Tunnel installed. We have OpenSSL installed. We've installed um, the necessary components to make the installation fly, and we're ready to try to start encrypting data from um, a client to a server, or from client A to client B. And we've done this all on Windows XP, and now we'll take a look at our um, Linux machine, and we'll start the process. Now that S-Tunnel's installed, what we'll do is we'll go to the Start menu, and we'll look for it. There's S-Tunnel. And what we want to do is we want to edit the stunnel.conf file. All right. So I'm going to open that up. Also, what I'd like to do is verify the location of that 
uh, .pem file, that stunnel.pem file. So I'll go to Computer, C Drive, Program Files, and there's stunnel. And there is stunnel.pem. This is our this is our key, our um, certif certificate that we're going to need. So that's good. All right. So I have that folder open. Now in this configuration file, we can. Here are some example SSL server modes. Now stunnel can function in server mode or it can function in client mode. So and you can see here that some of the um, client modes have been commented out. If you want it to be in client mode, you have to have the word client equals yes ready to go. Okay, um, but we're going to be in server mode, right? So we can set up our own server mode. So we'll copy here. I'm going to copy that example, paste it, and I'm going to start by using a very simple program called Netcat or NCAT. And we're going to have to pick a port that we want to accept on. So in this case, we'll connect. In this case, we'll connect on, let's say, 44. We'll accept on, I'm sorry, we'll accept on 4488 and connect on 44. 89. Okay, so we've set here the port that we're going to listen, uh, accept um, communication on, and then the port that we're going to connect on. I'll hit File, Save. Notice in this configuration file for stunnel.conf, um, we can see a lot of the lines have been commented out with these semicolons, but if we scroll up, you can see here a couple of interesting things. Um, for one, under certificate key, you can see that it says cert equals, and then it has the path to the key. It says stunnel.pem. So this is the path to the certificate that we need, and you can see that it's already been configured by default, right? We can open up an output. Um, to stunnel.log if we want to log information and troubleshoot, right? Which is probably a good idea. Um, also, you can see, let's see here, options, right? Disable support for insecure SSL version 2 protocol. So options equals no SSL v2. So SSL v2 has been disabled for stunnel because it's an older, I guess, um, less secure version. Um, so anyway, that looks good. So I'm just going to minimize that. And now what we can do is just double click on S tunnel to run it. And you can see now in the system tray, we can see it running here. And we can um, say reload S tunnel.conf. We can double click on it to get output here. And I've just double clicked on that little icon in the system tray. And you can see that compiled running with OpenSSL right reading the configuration file configuration successful and then I reloaded the configuration file so right now s tunnel is running on this Windows XP client right in server mode and it's waiting for a connection on port 4488 now if we go back to our diagram we have s tunnel let's say we have s tunnel working right but if we go back to our diagram, now we have on the server side of things, we're running S tunnel in server mode. So we have our S tunnel server running, but we don't have a service, a let's say a non-secure service on our on our let's say machine here, our host, client B, or in this case I've called it server since it's running the server side of things. We don't have a service running. So we need to run some type of service for it to channel communications back and forth. It could be a service like HTTP, like a web server, or it could be a mail server. It could be all kinds of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to set up some kind of service to um, listen for S-Tunnel to funnel the traffic to. And so to do that, what I think we're going to do is we're going to download uh, Netcat and run Netcat. 
Okay, I'm at nmap.org forward slash ncat, and I'm going to look for the download portable version of ncat or netcat, and it says here um, we have built a statically compiled Windows binary version of ncat. You can download it inside a zip file here. So I'm going to download this here also to the desktop. Okay, and now that I have that downloaded, I can extract it. And I can copy this file to my Windows folder so that it's available in my command prompt. So we'll just copy it into the Windows folder. Alright, and so now we'll have access to it. 